Hey guys, thank you for clicking in this video. At ang pag-uusapan natin sa episode na ito ay we will be talking about type of residential and occupancy at kung ano yung mga minimum required setback sa residential building or sa structure na ito. So I believe na mahalaga itong topic na ito sapagkat kung ikaw ay may kaalaman kung ano yung mga required minimum setback mismo sa property mo ma-apply mo at in case na merong nag attempt na manlalamang sa property mo so at least may pagtanggol mo yung sarili mo when it comes to this usapin. So I hope na tatapusin mo yung panonood ng video na ito para meron tayong matututunan at at the same time mag-grasp natin yung mga importante na dapat nating tatandaan. So by the way guys, I'm Junior Benz and welcome back sa aking YouTube channel. So this channel creates video tutorial and construction related videos. Now sa video ng ito, we'll have the construction related video coming up. Disclaimer guys, I will be putting all the references that I'm using sa ating description box below. Para at least kung gusto niyong puntahan yung mga references na ginagamit natin, pwede rin yung mabasa kung saan ko kinuha yung aking mga references. So first, ang ating pag-uusapan, let's define kung ano itong, or let's understand kung ano itong setback. So let's define first kung ano itong yard. Ang yard is the required open space left between the outer face of the building or structure and the property line. So it's either in front, rear, right, and left side yards. Basis sa ating illustration na to, ang yards ay ito yung required open space between the outermost face sa building mo at sa property line. So halimbawa na lang dito sa ating illustration, ito yung apat na yards within our building. So ang tinutukoy dito na width of the yard is what we call the setback. So ang length between the property line and the outermost face of the building is your setback. Yards prescribed for commercial, industrial, institutional, and recreational buildings. So yung mga required setback ay magkaiba po ang mga minimum requirement when it comes sa ating group of occupancy. So we will talk about that later. So ano nga ba ang kalagahan? Bakit meron tayong setback na kailangan i-observe? So first, this is to ensure that our structure or building is away from roads, away from the water bodies, and away from the other building. Then, by this setback, we will ensure that our building receives the adequate natural light. So kailangan talaga na merong papasok na adequate lighting for your building. Hindi pwedeng kulob yung structure mo or your building mo. Kailangan meron access siya for adequate lighting. At this is the most important one is to ensure the sufficient ventilation. So ito po talaga yung pinaka main reason kung bakit kailangan natin ng setback na i-observe sa ating mga structure. Ang sufficient ventilation. Dahil as a human, kailangan natin ng fresh air na papasok sa atin katawan. Kailangan ng ating katawan ng oxygen. By that, yung ating structure kailangan merong sufficient ventilation para makapasok yung hangin sa ating structure, sa ating building. And in addition to this, meron tayong mga required setback or sabihin natin uh, easement when it comes sa ating structure and against sa mga water bodies. So, kailangan i-observe natin yung setback na yan para hindi ma-damage yung ating structure. And the same way, protection ng mga naka-occupy doon sa structure na yun, kailangan nila ng protection against the noisance elements. So, for example, malapit ka sa airport, maraming airplane, yung mga noise pollution dyan, kung malapit ka sa mga industries. Actually, sa usapin na yun ay we will tackle sa easement. And lastly, at importantly, kung bakit mag-observe tayo ng setback is to avoid one building does not infringe on the other building. So, hindi po pwede tayong mag-over sa ating property line. Huwag nating gawin yan dahil masama yan at hindi yan nakakalugod. But before we proceed sa ating discussion, kung hindi ka pa nakapag-subscribe sa aking channel, please to consider subscribing my channel, tap that notification bell para ma-update ka every time na meron tayong bagong upload just like this video. So let's proceed! So now let's talk about the minimum setback for residential buildings or structures. So ang gagamitin po natin ay yung table 8.2 ng PD1096. So if you take a look from this table, meron siyang yard, 
front side, so side, left, and right ito, at saka merong likod, itong rear. So, type of residential use or occupancy, meron tayong five types of, res of residential use. Meron tayong R1, R2, R3, 4, and 5. So, let's talk about first the R1. So, itong R1 ay ito yung residential one from the group A sa residential dwellings. So itong R1 is for residential building structure for exclusive use for single family occupants and this is a low density residential zone. So this is characterized mainly for single families. So kadalasan ito yung ating classifications sa ating mga bahay. Kung single family lang yung occupants ng ating bahay at mostly ito ay single detached. So pag sabi nating single detached, ang single detached has open space on all sides of the structure. Wala siyang katabing ibang structure. So, sa ating illustration, ito yung single detached na structure and then R1. Let us assume na uh, single family yung occupants. Ang ating required setbacks for front yard is 4.5 meters. For sides, kailangan ma-observe natin ang 2 meters in both sides. Then, for rear side is the same 2 meters. So that's for R1. So hindi pwedeng i-occupy mo yung kabuo ang property mo. Kailangan meron kang setback na i-observe for your structure from the property line to the outermost face of your building. So actually, there are certain cases na pwede mo siyang i-maximize the point na yung wall mo ay exactly on the property line pero there are certain regulations na i-follow mo it's either pwede kang i-firewall but we will discuss that one on separate vlog so let's focus first dito sa mga specified lengths na required for minimum setback so let's proceed with R2 so yun yung requirements for R1 for R2 meron tayong basic and meron tayong maximum so for basic, kailangan mo ng 3 meters for front, side is 2 meters at the same time for rear is 2 meters. For maximum type is meron kang need na 8 meters for front, sides 2 meters and for rear is 2 meters. So ano itong R2? Ang R2 is still belong to category or group A for residential dwellings that's for R2 and this is a medium density residential use or occupancy and characterized mainly as low rise single attached or duplex or multi level building structure exclusive use as multi family dwellings so itong single attached building means that the house shares a common wall typical on both sides of the property this is actually the same in duplex type na mga bahay so this is the single attached dwelling so that's for r2 yun yung mga required na lengths for your setback so sa basic r2 this is a single attached or duplex building yung sabi natin kanina that is from one story to three story in height in which each unit for separate use or single family dwellings so single family dwellings pwede itong R2 that is for basic and then for maximum is this is a low rise multi level building structure from three story to five stories in height and for use of multi family dwellings so that's for maximum R2 for residential. So let's have the group B. Yung group B is ito yung ating R3, R4, and R5. So ano itong residential 3 type na building? So for our setback, kailangan natin sa basic na 3 meters. So meron tayo ditong note for sides and rear. So abutments on two sides and rear property lines may be allowed with conditions as enumerated under section 804 subsection 10 of this rule. So basahin nyo na lang. And then for maximum type ng R3, yung front mo kailangan ng 8 meters and the side is optional for 2 meters. Then for rear side is 2 meters. So ano itong R3? Ang R3 ay, this belongs to group B, residential hotels and apartments. And this is starting for high density residential use. So medyo marami-rami na yung tao dito na naka-occupy. Meron din siyang basic and maximum. So mainly, this is a low rise or medium rise building, structure exclusive use for multi-family dwellings or mixed housing type. Pag sabihin natin multi-family dwellings, so maraming family nag-occupy on that structure. 
And then yung mixed housing type is it's either pwede mo kasing gamitin commercial yung baba at the same time uh, residential yung nasa taas. Di ba kadalasan yung mga nakikita natin na ginamit yung baba as for commercial like mag ginagamit nila for tindan or office or something then residential yung nasa taas. And that is residential 3 for group B. So for R4, ang ating required setback is for front is 4.5 then sides optional for 2 meters and for rear is 2 meters. So, ang ating R4 is basically belongs to group B and then this is a medium to high density residential use or occupancy. Mainly, this is also a low rise townhouse building. So, nakikita naman natin yung townhouse, di ba? So, alam natin kung ano yung itsura ng townhouse building. Structure exclusive use for multi-family dwelling. So, obviously, marami naka-occupy na family units sa townhouse na yan. Ganun yung ating R4. Yung R5, ang minimum setback niya is for front is 6 meters, sides is 3 meters, and for the rear is 3 meters. So, itong R5 is still belongs to group B and this is a very high density residential use or occupancy. So, this is medium rise or high rise condominium buildings. Alam natin kung ano yung condominium for exclusive use as multi-family dwelling. So, obviously, pag sabi natin condominium, marami ay nakatira dyan. So, it's a multiple family dwelling. So, those are the required minimum setback for residential building and structure sa ating R1, sa ating R2, sa ating R3, R4, and R5. So, kailangan natin i-observe lahat ng mga minimum setback lengths from this table kasi ito yung required. Ito yung minimum setback. Hindi pwedeng bababa ka pa dito unless otherwise, nag-conform ka for another conditions na naayon din sa ating batas. Pero most likely, dito sa minimum setback, ito yung required length, ito yung required set minimum, ito yung required minimum setback ng ating structure from the property line. So I guess that's it sa ating discussion kasi nagpo-focus lang tayo sa residential occupancy or residential type sa ating structure and meron ding iba't ibang required setback when it comes to commercial building, when it comes to industrial, when it comes to, to institutional. So lahat yun may mga prescribed minimum setback. So ang ating pinag-uusapan is all about residential building or structure from R1 to R5 and the minimum required setback. So hopefully we will produce more construction video at nagsisimula pa lang akong gumawa ng mga construction video. And I hope that you and I hope na papanoorin niyo po ang akin and I hope na you will support all those videos na you produce natin for construction video. Dahil for sure, marami kayong matututunan and later on we will be uploading yung mga estimate videos. So paano mag-design ng mga building? Yun ating mga i-expect on the next uploads sa aking channel. So I guess that's it for this vlog. Have a great day and God bless. Bye.